everyone. We are at Kota in Austin, Texas today. The only permanent track in the US. And today we're chatting with Alicia Prelip, the director of motorsport events here. Thank you so much, Alicia, for taking the time to chat with me. I know you've been at Kota right from the beginning here. How, how many years have you been here again? I've been here 11 years. <laughs> wow, you must have seen a lot of stuff happening here. That is yes. so exciting. Um, so what does your role as director of motorsport events comprise of? Um, it includes all of the team services, all the freight services coming in and out of internationally mm -hmm. across the world. Um, also consists of all of the opening, closing and the podium ceremonies. Wow. And then any of the interactions with the drivers, getting them to Q&A's all their driver uh, parade. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Yeah. So obviously in the past 11 years, you have probably made a lot of like memories. Mm -hmm. Is there any one that particularly sticks out? Um, one thing that does stick out in my mind, I did an F1 collapse like you did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I rode in a Mercedes GTR and oh, wow. went a little over 150 miles per mm -hmm. hour on the back street. It was very scary, but really fun. Yeah, <laughs> I was doing the hot lab yesterday. We went about 150. I was holding on for dear life. Yes. So I, I empathize <laughs> with you. What is your favorite thing about your job? I think just planning and seeing something come together. We mm -hmm. work so hard on putting planning and executing and getting things ready for every single event, whether it's a domestic event or an international event as big as F1. It's just working with the people, seeing the guests come back here every single year. We have year over year the same guests or the same clientele that's mm -hmm. coming back. It's great to see them again. Yeah, <laughs> It's really fun and you know we just kind of catch up on our friendships that we've gained over the past several years. Yeah, it's a great way to make more connections and relationships, especially mm -hmm. because it is such a small world like i think if we're in the world of motorsport you know it seems like there's so much it can just consume you if you take a step back you see that it is still like mm -hmm. a bubble almost mm -hmm. all right so we've talked about your favorite thing what is your least favorite thing about your job i thought about this and i think that my least favorite thing is on sunday night when the race ends it's like sad mm. <laughs> you know you work so hard for all this yep. and then it's all over with yeah is it like a feeling of like oh i it's, kind of want to go back to yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and it's just, it's almost like emotional for everybody is leaving, everybody's yeah. gone. And it's just like all these connections yeah. you've made, you're not going to see them again for another year. Mm. And the excitement, and it's it's the adrenaline, yeah. it's just over with. Yeah, <laughs> I'm surprised, honestly, to hear you say that because I would just be kicking back with like four glasses of wine. I mean, we like, do. <laughs> crazy because, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. We do, yeah. but yeah. it's just, it's sad. Yeah. It's a sad time. Yeah. So the Kota experience is known for being one of the most iconic ones, especially in the US, but even globally, honestly. Kota is one of the races that I've always wanted to come to. So obviously you are entrenched in making the Kota experience. Mm -hmm. So what, in your opinion, makes it so iconic? So I think we've done a really good job at making this a place to be a good destination for mm -hmm. F1 yeah. and fans. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got the iconic turn one hill. Yeah. We have our observation deck. Yeah. Uh, there's just a lot of fan activation out here. We make uh -huh. it fun for all ages. It's mm -hmm. not just for a racing fan. Mm -hmm. So we have like the Grand Plaza, Guardian, and yes. those yep. kind of things that we can use. And then we also have all the hospitality tents that are built. Yeah. Um, units that fans love to go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just really good racing and yeah. the teams love being here. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at last year, we had Daniel come in the paddock oh, no, on the horse. Yeah. <laughs> Iconic, yeah, never forget Things that. Things that people will never forget. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about like one last minute hiccup that comes to mind? If you've had any. Gosh, I mean, you always, it's inevitable that we have things happen mm -hmm. uh, as much as you plan you execute yeah. everything that's you think everything's going perfect there's always things that come up sometimes they need more items or yeah. they need more furniture or you know anything like that so yeah, yeah. so you just roll with it basically. we roll with it we do what we can yeah and just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just go with that Fair enough. how long in advance do you guys start planning we literally start planning 
the week of race week the year before. <laughs> <laughs> this year we added a huge lounge. Wow. Last, or in 2022, we added okay. a huge lounge. So that was new since we're back uh -huh. open to the public with COVID. Right, right, with. right. Of course. And then now this coming year, we'll have another lounge in the paddock, which is great okay. for all of the team's hospitality tents who, you know, they can come and sit in our lounge and yeah. enjoy the race. What is the one thing you think would surprise people specifically about planning motorsport events? Um, I think it's a very unique event. Mm -hmm. It's very different from everything else around regular event planning for meetings and conferences and everything like that. Um, we put a lot of blood, sweat and tears <laughs> into it because we want to make it perfect. Yeah, <laughs> and course. I think I just think the uniqueness of it, it's a very unique event. It's not something that anybody can just walk into and understand that what tires and mm -hmm. gases and yeah. <laughs> things the teams need, yeah. which are very specific to what yeah. their needs are to race on this racetrack. Yeah. So it's very different. Yeah. I have had the privilege to work with a couple of people from your team already, and they're all so lovely. But I also noticed that a lot of your team is women. So you will lead a very female forward team. And I'm curious, has that changed over the past few years? Has the demographic always been mostly women? Because I know over the past like five or six years, there's a bit, been a big influx of female fans into the sport. And as a result, more women working in motorsport as well. But from an events planning side at Kota, has that changed at all? I think we've always been a lot of women mm -hmm. <laughs> on our side. Mm -hmm. Some of the girls on my team or in the past as well, uh -huh. are very heavily involved in yeah. motorsports. They love motorsports. They could tell you everything about a car more than some of the men can. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love hearing that because I think people forget that women can talk about tech things yes. too yeah. while planning events. Yeah. yeah. So right now we're standing at the starting grid, Pitt Strait, and it's so like we have the grandson in the back and it's just so surreal to think that in 2022, you guys broke the record of the most attended race with almost half a million people here. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you've been here for 11 years now, so you have seen that increase in popularity and increase in attendance. How have you, you know, changed gears if you know if you needed to, and how did you manage this increase in attendance and you know that the big popularity increase? I think overall, we've all done a really good job at navigating that. Mm -hmm. You know, you increase security, you increase fan ex uh, experiences yeah. and you have a you know we had to increase all of our hospitalities and our mm -hmm. seating and stands throughout the facility yeah. um, we just have to create more experiences for mm -hmm. the fans to ha enjoy and have yeah. fun and people leave this place and they're happy and they're yeah. smiling and they're excited and yeah. we just have to involve them more are you guys looking forward to like breaking another record maybe Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because Kota, I mean, it's, I've just walked into a track with you and it's just, it's just so surreal. It feels like, you know, you're at the home mm -hmm. of American F1 and I don't think that that's ever going to go away. And I think every fan really feels that, especially American fans. Yeah. The energy down here is amazing. Yeah. During an event is just like, you can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to just walk through a paddock or walk through a hospitality or the Grand Plaza or the fan activation areas. And you just feel the energy of mm -hmm. even these little kids that are just so excited about racing. <laughs> it's so sweet. Yeah, that's amazing. But thank you so, so much that's for fun. joining me today. Yes. So thank you so much. You need to come back and visit us in October. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Thank well, you. thank you very much.